favorite cup of tea checking in with spill the tea okay so we are here in atlanta and the beat auction okay and this is anonymous so what is the purpose of having a beat auction today here in atlanta um basically to shed light on great music as well as give chances to people who don't have chances people who are the next and next and next geniuses of the world so for people who don't understand that the future is in the kids this is what it's about That's yeah it. definitely the future is in the kids i do agree they are the future the next generation of music so you work with like timberland and Nicki minaj and you got one really big hit anaconda okay so with anaconda that did sample a throwback twerk song so what do you think is the difference between sampling and binding when it comes to like using old beats and songs at the end of the day it comes towards your passion fucks it doesn't matter if you sample, it doesn't matter if you come, it up, come up with it originally. At the end of the day, it's your intent. So while I sampled Anaconda, it became a national water song for different countries because of the intent. So what I'm saying is your mindset establishes the rest of what you accomplish. So whatever you're trying to reach for, your mindset establishes what happens. And then how did you get founded, breaking into the industry? Originally, it started with a one-way flight. I was at the Art Institute of Atlanta. And I took a one-way flight, a standby flight. When me and my brother, I don't know if he's in here right now, but he's here. We took a one-way flight to L.A. with a CD. And about a week later, I got signed to Universal because of the preparation and all the work we put in years before that. So that's, that's really why I'm here, bro, to let people know that at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing, music, real estate, whatever, it could be the last minute and you can come through with a win. That's it. That's really it. And what has it been like working with Timberland, one of the legends? Man, it's been awesome. It's like your uncle, your uncle at the family reunion. That's what I call him because he he treats it as if he's 14 years old and he still loves everything about it. So that's really what it is. He's taught me so much to where I can't I can't do anything else but follow his path. So that's it. What up, what up? It's Spill the Tea, Tea in the Streets. We got Black Metaphor here, okay? And so I got a question for you. So when you're producing and you're in the studio, is it, do you send beats back and forth or do you like to be in the studio one-on-one -on -one with the artist? I really, I do, I do both. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to work in the studio with the artist more. But, you know, in today's age, sometimes I got to email tracks out. So uh, sometimes, you know, I email some stuff and they might like something and then I'll fly out. Sometimes you just got to fly out, though. Yeah. And then I researched that you are producing for Rick Ross, okay? So definitely that's major. Uh, what were some of your favorite songs to work on with Rick Ross? Shout out to Ross. Uh, my two favorites is The Idols Become Rivals and The uh, Richest Gangster. Yeah. So in a studio session with you, typically, do you like to get inebriated while producing? Like before producing, or do you like to, like, what, are some, what is your process while you're in the studio producing? I mean, I like to smoke, but I don't have to smoke to make music, you feel me? But a lot of times I just enjoy that, you know what I'm saying? It relaxes me and it just gets me in my zone that I need to be in.